there are two major topics in calculus, derivatives and integrals. Um, and before that, we talked about limits, which give us some of the theory to start establishing these different ideas. So we've talked about limits. We've spent a fair amount of time talking about derivatives. So now integration is going to be our next topic. Before we get into talking specifically about what we mean by integration, the first thing we want to talk about is just the concept of antiderivatives. So math is full of inverse operations. That is, operations that undo each other. So for instance, if we started with x, and then we were taking the square root of x, we could then square that expression. The radical and the exponent would cancel each other out and get us back to that x that we started off with. So roots and radicals are one form of inverse operations in math. Antiderivatives are the inverse operation for derivatives. So essentially we've been looking at how to find derivatives. Now we want to start with that resulting end product, the derivative of a function, and get back to the original function we would have started with. So we want to find an antiderivative of x squared. So our function f of x equals x squared, there's some function that if we took the derivative of that, we would get to x squared. So one place we can start is by looking at that exponent. We know the power rule um, for derivatives tells us that this exponent drops down as a factor in front. So our original function must have had an exponent that was one higher because we also reduced that exponent by one. So it's possible that our antiderivative is x cubed. The nice thing about antiderivatives is it's really easy to check and see if we came to the right answer. We just need to take the derivative of x cubed and see if that gets us back to x squared. So in this case, the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared, which doesn't quite match up with what we started off with. But we can see that the only thing that's different is this 3 out front. So what if instead of x cubed, we tried the function x cubed over 3? So then we can check by, again, taking the derivative of this function we're proposing. This would give us 3x squared over 3. The threes would cancel, giving us x squared. So that absolutely checks out. The anti, an antiderivative of x squared is going to be x cubed over 3. And so in general, we can say that some function, capital F of x, is an antiderivative of lowercase f of x if the derivative of capital F of x equals lowercase f of x. So x cubed over 3 is an antiderivative of x squared because when we take the derivative, we get to x squared. So again, we're just thinking about working those derivatives backwards. So in example 2, we want to find another derivative of x squared. So for instance, we could consider x cubed over 3 plus 4. So to check that, we can take the derivative of this function, which the derivative of x cubed over 3 will give us x squared. The derivative of 4 is 0. So we found another antiderivative of x squared. But we could repeat that by tacking on any constant we want. So we could say add 127. And then checking that, would still get us to a derivative of x squared. Because regardless of what that constant is, the derivative of a constant is always 0. So what we end up with is that every function, f of x, has an infinite number of antiderivatives. Because again, I could keep constructing these antiderivatives using any number here that I want. 
As long as there's no variable, that derivative always goes to zero. So each time we construct a new antiderivative. So what we want is to write a single expression that represents the entire family of functions that are antiderivatives of x squared. So we can't list out this infinite number of solutions. So instead what we would write is something of the form x cubed over 3, which is that general antiderivative. The derivative of this will lead us to x squared. And to represent that entire family, we'll add some arbitrary constant. So we'll write that as plus c, where c is just some constant. So this expression represents the entire family of functions, capital F of x, whose derivative would lead us back to x squared. 